Hello, it's Friday afternoon, my friends. This is Janice Jimenez, your real estate gal. Last week, we have a conversation with Dini Palai, a consultant of Feng Shui and an engineer who's located in the United Kingdom. He is here with us today still to keep talking about Feng Shui and how it affects our decisions in purchasing, decorating, living, and staying in our home or in our office. In our last episode, we talked about the evolution and the history of feng shui. Today, we will be deep diving on the meaning of feng shui and the misconceptions around it. DB, take it away. So feng shui literally means wind and water. Feng means wind and shui means water. So the art of feng shui is basically try to get the chi around us. Chi means the energy, the universal life force. I think many of us has some misconception around the fact that feng shui is probably some uh, furniture placement technique or is probably some interior decoration. So no, it's feng shui is not limited to interior decoration or furniture placement within our house. It has much more wider significance. Feng shui is actually understanding the energy dynamics or the chi dynamics in the nature and then live in harmony with nature. And that actually helps us in improving the overall lifestyle. This actually helps us improve the health, wealth and relationship. And this comes from the macrocosm and microcosm. If we understand the energy behavior in our world, in our universe, then we can introduce or influence the similar positivity in our life as well. So the macrocosm is the universe, the microcosm is our life. What an interesting discovery, at least for somebody like me, who is new to the feng shui world. DB, what does qi mean? As per the classical ancient Chinese philosophy, the qi, the universal life force, move over the wind. And if we have water, then the chi gets collected over there. That's why it is wind and water. So the flow of energy and chi, and how can we collect it in form of water? And then we influence or bring positivity in our life. And if we see one of the application of wind and water is probably the water fountain, the water feature or the fish tank in our house. So we try to place a fish tank in a favorable energy spot and then we try to accumulate chi energy so that we can influence our wealth accumulation in our life. You have so much information on this topic, Debbie. I'm going to start to call you professor from now on since obviously you've done so much research and I'm learning so much from you. I am starting to realize the importance, how powerful this information is and how much influence it has in the lives of the many people who believe in feng shui. Can we talk about yin and yang? What is it? I think that's a very good question, Jani. So yin and yang, so this is one of the fundamental principles of feng shui. So if we look into yin and yang, so there is a Tai Ji symbol of yin and yang. So this represents the eternal duality of nature. So if we take a closer look at the Tai Ji symbol of yin and yang, so this means that there is always two opposite forces of nature. And by opposing forces of nature, this means the day and night, male and female, the light and dark. So all these represents the eternal duality of nature. What is important to observe here, this eternal duality is inseparable. They are always present together. That's point number one. Point number two, they always interact with each other, correct? And the point number three, one gives birth to the other. So they are transformational in nature. And if I take one example, so we, we start with that day, and then day gives rise to the night. And then we again see day. So it's a continuous interchange or transformation of one phase into other. So this is called yin and yang. And it is very important to understand what is the energy present in an environment and achieve an yin yang balance. If we do not achieve a balance, then it goes out of balance and that causes stress in our life. And as we all know, if we have stress in our life, that has long-term health issues. So therefore, from feng shui perspective, we need to understand the energy signature of the house. We try to achieve a yin yang balance so that you can live a healthy lifestyle. So the yin yang means wind and water. I want to go back to that topic of 
What is the significance of having a water feature in an auspicious or as part of the home or your office environment? Yeah, thanks. And that's a really, really good question. So as I said, Feng Shui is all about understanding the energy flow, right? And how can we attract that energy and store the energy and to influence our positivity in the life. And one of the examples or application areas is to use indoor water feature within our house. In order to activate the positive energy within our house, so, so one of the easiest and simplest way is to put a indoor water feature. And this could be a fish tank, this could be any uh, indoor water fountain, but what we need to probably keep in mind is the size of the water feature to be able to activate the positive chi. If, a, for example, if it is a 1,000 square feet uh, apartment or house, then it is better to take a three to four feet fish tank. That's a massive size fish tank. Because if we take a smaller size fish tank or a baby fish tank, that may not be good enough to accumulate the chi. That's probably one of the first things we need to consider. And the second aspect is that the location of the fish tank or any water feature. So typically what we, as I already said, Feng Shui is all about the energy influence or energy dynamics as per the time and space. So each year, the, the positive energy changes its location and direction. Therefore, what we need to understand for any given year, so for example, in 2021, which, what is the wealth sector of my house? And then I can place the fish tank in the wealth sector for 2021, and that will help us to become rich and wealthy and get influence that will help us to become rich and wealthy and attract abundance and prosperity in our life. That time just goes by so fast with interesting conversations such as this one. Well, that's all we have for this afternoon show, but of course, come back next week for more information on Feng Shui for the Home with my guest, D.V. Palai. As always, this is Janice Jimenez, your real estate gal, wishing you to live life regal.